exposure. Um, you can keep the adult in a 20 gallon. I do not recommend a 20 gallon because I feel like they need more space. You don't want to stunt their growth. Um, for a male, I would recommend like a 30 at the very least or 25 or something, you know, larger than whatever you keep a female in. Um, substrate, you can keep them on coconut fiber, eco earth or bioactive substrate like Josh's frogs is where I get mine um they need at least enough depth like so they can fully submerge under if they want to go down there to help them digest their little bugs or rodents or whatever you feed them um you want them to be able to do whatever they need to do naturally to get that down and to process it with their bodies um their temperature and humidity should be at least 70 to 80 percent all the time Temperature should be, you want a gradulent, like, okay, what, can I turn this around? Okay, so pudgy, I need to wipe that off, excuse it. Pudgy is warmer over here. This is her around 87 degrees. I have her temperature set on 88 degrees in her water. But anytime you get these, you need to put them on a regulator. You do not want to end up boiling your animal, frog, amphibian, reptile, whatever you have, snake, you want to keep your heat on a regulator. This is Zoomed's. You can set the temperature. I've noticed that whatever I set this at, um, it usually is a little bit less than what it says. So I always set it a little, a little bit higher. Um, this is her cooler side. You want to keep it around um, about 75 degrees. This is my papers. You see the reflection. I'll open the door in a second and I'll let you watch her. That's her little cup that she came in, her crown, that y'all see her in. Um, her water, I used to have it, like, a huge thing in her, in my DIY enclosure she was in. But this works fine for her. She loves it. And everyone wonders why she is sitting on glass bottom right there. That is because she likes to take her little back feet, and for some reason she wants to, like, submerge herself in that corner. But she doesn't want to be over here. She wants to be on the glass up against that. And she kicks all her dirt. And you can kind of see how thick it is right there. I mean, that's like, you know, a lot. Anyway, so that was enclosure size, substrate, temp, and humidity. Her water, you want, they are semi-aquatic. You have to have water with these guys. They love it. Pudgy is over a year old, and she stays in here all the time. Um, you can do half and half land, half and half water. Like, take a piece of um, plexiglass or so and cut it to fit your enclosure. You need to use aqua or aquarium-safe glue, silicone glue. Um, please dechlorinate your water. I don't care if you have city water, tap water, whatever. Dechlorinate your water. And yes, Pudgy is always in dechlorinated water. Um, feeding juveniles should be fed every single day or every other day, no exceptions. If they will not eat, you still leave them in that tub for 15 minutes and let them eat as much as they want to. Pudgy eats three to four times a week, which is recommended for an adult. She's a young adult. Sometimes I'll feed her more than that. But right now, she's eating three to four times a week and she eats for 15 minutes as much as she wants to, you know. Socializing and cohabitation. Okay. You never, ever, ever keep small pixie frogs with larger pixie frogs. The reason I say this is they will be cannibals and they will eat each other. The big one will eat the little one. Pudgy would eat baby Slim if I cohab them right now. Now, when Slim gets older and if he's he, she, whatever they are, especially if it's a female and they're around pudgy size, I will be keeping them in the same enclosure as pudgy if they get along. Some females will be territorial. Sometimes you cannot cohab them. It's a chance you take with having a species like an African bullfrog, a giant. I've never experienced anything with dwarfs. I cannot speak on those. Um, if you have two males, let's say pudgy was a male and Slim's a male, and they're around the same size. Males are known to be very territorial. I'm not saying you cannot cohab them, but you have a higher chance of having, you know, little shindigs going on of not nice behavior. 
Um, let's see what else I have for you. Oops. Sexing. The way to sex your pixie frog. About six to eight months of age, you will be should be able to sex your pixie. Sometimes it's harder than others. Females have smaller, more narrow heads, and males have larger, more wide heads. As you can see, if you look at them from above, Pudgy has a very narrow head to body size ratio. Um, nuptial pads are only on males, which are, they're very dark. I don't have a male to show you right now. But that can take a couple years even sometimes to develop on pixie frogs. Um, Pudgy does not have any. She does not croak at night. She has made little, their croaks are very um, different, a female and a male. Females are known to as well. They're more squeaky-like. That is what Pudgy has. She does not have the deep boy cow sounding croak. Um, it will scare you, even the squeaky ones. Anyway. Now, they can live 30 plus years. Like I said, I think one was known to have lived for like 45 years. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Um, oh, I'm going to show you that as well. Okay, temperament. They're considered to be even-tempered, um, which means they aren't docile. Babies will be shy. Pudgy was so shy as a child. <laughs> um, I got her from Josh's Frogs last May. Not this past May, but the last one. Um, she was she would not eat in front of me at all. Like, Slim eats wonderfully compared to her at the beginning. Josh's Frogs say that they're about two months out of the water when you get them. Um, they send them into little deli cups. Pudgy was tiny, tiny. Um, I had to do what I hate to do, which is leave crickets in the enclosure because they will gnaw on your frog or animal or reptile, whatever. You never leave insects in there. But I could not get her to eat. And I did. And she was getting fat with her weekly weighing, weigh-ins. Um, so I knew she was eating them. They would disappear. Um, we did have trouble with baby crickets at one time, but you know, all is well. She eats now. Um, Slim has times where he will eat and will not eat, or they, sorry, will not eat. And I will leave them in a plastic tub with insects, like super worms or whatever, not crickets, because they will jump out. Please use a lid for warning. Um, and I'll leave them for 15 minutes, come back. Sometimes worms are gone, sometimes they're not. Um, so it all depends. You have to have, you have to be persistent and you have to have patience with pixie frogs or any reptile. When you first get them, as they're growing, some take longer. Sometimes they have neurological issues that you won't even see, especially with, if you get it from a breeder that's not like certified or a big brand name like Josh's frogs is really well. I don't expect to have neurological issues with my pixie frog because I don't believe that they're going to be inbred. Um, but you have to be careful with what breeder you get them from as well. They do not require any special lighting whatsoever. They do not have to have UVB. They do not have to have LED. They don't ha have to have any of that. Um, I keep a UVB bulb fluorescent above Pudgy. It's not on right now. I don't like to turn it on all the time. Um, I do have this small dome lamp with a floodlight in it to keep it a little warm, warmer over here to keep it at 87 or so. Um, and she likes it during the day. I have a ceramic heat emitter that I use, um, and I will get on heating now. It is recommended for a under tank heater on the side, the side of the enclosure, because if you put it at the bottom, What's gonna happen when they burrow? Like if she did that right there and there was a undertake heater to get warm, to process her food. She could burn herself. You want to put them on the side. I do not have one on this one. I have it on her 55 gallon. And you cannot take off a undertank mat heater and put it on something else. The glue will not adhere. It will not work properly. Do not do that. If you don't want to work with a ceramic, I mean, um, excuse me, a undertank heater on the side of your tank, you can use a ceramic heat emitter. They make different wattage. You find what works for you, depending on how far the top of your enclosure is from where the animal is, etc. 
Um, PC frogs are actually not recommended for beginner frog owners, but although I have been experienced with all kinds of exotic animals, raccoons to cats to dogs to bearded dragons, etc., they're not recommended for beginners. She was my first frog, my first pet frog, and Pudgy is amazing. She's very docile. It took forever to get to where we are now. Started off with little con taking her out to feed, and now she'll tell me when she wants to get put up. She'll crawl in my hand. Um, yeah, you just gotta have patience with pixie frogs. And if you get them, please do a lot of research because, and I mean more than just watching my video, do your own research. Um, there's all kinds of groups. You're gonna have good groups and bad groups. You're gonna have some professionals that are seem like expertise in this field. Um, sometimes they're not. You just have to do your own research. Um, now, talking about bioactive, I'm not sure if you can quite see it, but there are springtails in here. And I, white dwarf isopods. I see a couple of springtails moving. They're tiny little bugs. They will eat old food, waste matter, and all kinds of stuff in there. They'll munch on the wood. I have a mixture of Josh's Frost Bioactive substrate. There is the smallest amount of sand in here. I do not recommend a lot of sand for your frogs, any frog. Um, there is sphagnum moss in here. There is a little bit of cypress and a little bit of organic topsoil. And I stretched it out for her enclosure and Slim's. And I started Slim out in Bioactive as well. Your bioactive soil will never go bad as long as you keep it clean. If you see something that seems moldy, something's not right. Because these things will eat up mold too. I have not had to deal with any insects in here since I've went bioactive. I have not dealt with any bad molding. I have not dealt with her substrate drying out. Um, it is the best decision you can make for your frog. A lot of people recommend a lot of hiding spaces. You can do plants in here. I don't do real plants. That's a fake plant from PetSmart or Petco or Amazon. I don't remember. I don't do plants because that right there will happen. I had a plant in her 55 gallon, a lot of them, if, you rec if you've seen some of her old posts. I had pothos. I had snake plants. Um, all kinds of stuff. She dug them all up and killed them all. I have like two that are babies now. <laughs> I got off of the roots, rooting system. Um, now, estivation, I'm not, if I'm even saying that right, I'm so sorry again if I'm not. Um, that is what African bullfrogs do. What they do in South really dry and their rains are not coming. It gets, the humidity is so low. They start dry out. They're frogs. They breathe through their skin. They need water. They would not be able to survive without it. They're actually so round that they hold water inside of them, I was told. I was told that. That's some warm water she's got. Um, they will go under. They will hold the water to keep them hydrated over the summer months. When that rain hits, they emerge out the ground like little zombies. They will come out, they will eat, and that's usually how they um, introduce breeding in captivity. They put them through estivation. That can be deadly, whether it's for breeding or not. If your frog is in captivity and starts going under and making that thick slime coating on her, or them, him, whatever, something's not right. You need to adjust your humidity or your temperatures. You need to figure out what's wrong. Because that means you're, something is way off with your enclosure and where you're keeping your frog. Um, I've only dealt with Pudgy doing that one time. And it scared the living mess out of me. Because I've read on it a lot. Um, I'm all for going all natural and what they're used to in the wild and stuff. But when it's set, like, it has to do with her health, I'm not doing it. Um, I'm not going to compromise her just to experiment, you know? And 
the reason she went through that is I was living somewhere else. She, We're here at my mom and dad's now. But I was living somewhere else. She was not allowed to be with me. So my mom was keeping her for me. My mom doesn't know anything, you know, really about amphibians like pudgy, especially pixie frogs, or what they need. I thought I explained thoroughly, but obviously not enough. Like, she kept the water in here and everything, but she didn't wet the soil at all. It was very dry, and I, the humidity was close to none. Pudgy had probably, it seemed like, six layers of mucus coating her. Dried up, shriveled. I, I thought I was going to lose her. I did a warm honey bath, and she woke up immediately, ate a ton after she shed all of that thick layer, and I was so thankful and happy, and she has been perfectly fine ever since. I do not recommend estivation. Like I said, if your frog is doing those things, I'm not saying if they burrow, if they are going through and staying under and making that thick layer on them where they look like a little sack of something fix your humidity and your temperatures figure it out do it for them unless you're a professional breeder in that case you're doing your own thing i don't know um and i don't know i think that is everything Somebody wanted to know how much Pudgy eats in a day or when she does eat for 50 minutes. And she eats a what? I lose count. Used to, I would count and be like, oh, she ate three super worms. She ate like three dubias, you know, when she was a baby. And then it went to like 20 to 30 to 35. Now she eats close to like, it seems 50, 60. So, anyway, yeah. If y'all have any more questions or want another video about certain things, just send in the questions to my Instagram, Pudgy's Instagram at Pudgy the Giant Bullfrog, and we'll be happily able to answer you.